Sa pagpapatuloy ng last week's episode of Cyber Chat, Executive Director Margarita Magsaysay, ating muling makakasama. Mas masusing pagtalakay sa mga pagbabago dulot ng anti-OSAEC si SAEM Law, pakinggan. More feedback from the ground, hatid ng ating aling police from the PNPWCPC, Police Major Michelle Morada. Cyber Chat Season 2 Cyber Enriching Day Chatters, I'm your host, Attorney Kath. Nagpupugay ang bago niyong katropa, Attorney Praise. Layan Lim po ang inyong Cyber Patroller. At ako naman po si Icon Winit, ang inyong Cyber Logger. Together, we raise consciousness on cyber threats and on our duty to protect, safeguard, and care for our children and the young. Dito lamang po sa Cyber Chat Season 2. In today's episode, we will continue our conversation from last week. Mukhang nabitin po tayo at kinapos sa oras. <laughs> Hashtag RA11930 IRR Implementation Updates. Hindi pa po ata nangangalahati ang dapat pag-usapan tukol dito. So, meron po tayong muling makakasama. Pero bago natin siya tawagin, pwede po ba akong magtanong? Go ahead, Lay. Um, kung hindi gumawa ng ordinance to localize RA 11930, eh, hindi may implement yung mga pagbabago sa proseso. Tama po ba ito? Sino po kaya yung mananagot dyan? Ang LGU po ba o yung respective government agencies or officials involved in the process? Meron po bang sistema na accountability pag ang isang national law ay hindi naipatupad sa local level? Napakaganda ng tanong mo, Lay. Pero mas maganda siguro kung tawagin na natin ang ating guest na nagbabalik, Executive Director Margarita Magsaysay or EDKIT. Welcome back po sa Cyber Chat. Magandang araw po, hindi magsaysay. A pleasant day, Icon, Lay, Attorney Kath, and Attorney Praise. Isang mapayapang araw po sa lahat. Lay, I heard your question earlier. Well, uh, talaga under the law, it really specifically sa- states there, no? Explicit doon na mandated ang mga LGUs na um, gumawa ng ordinance to localize their efforts against OSAEC. Kaya talaga po kami um, sa NCC, yun po talaga ang una naming uh, ginagawa. Talagang we are making roadshows with the LGUs to remind them of their obligations under the law. Kasi po talaga ang magiging kawawa po dyan talaga ay ang mga bata kung tutuusin ninyo. Kaya para sa amin po talagang napaka-importante po na meron talagang localized efforts against OSAIC. Oh, I see. Thank you po for your comments and clarifications po. Ako din po merong tanong. Since the implementation of uh, RA 11930, tumas ba or bumaba ang incidents ng OSAIC? Ilan po ba yung recorded incidents ng OSAIC based on the consolidated report of all law enforcement agencies before and after the implementation of the anti-OSAIC si Siam Lupo? Well, based on the data na po, reported to and monitored by the Interagency Council Against Trafficking Secretariat or the IACAT Secretariat, from 2003 to 2023, 669 cases of trafficking in persons, OSAIC, were filed in RTC. So, ito po yung mga top uh, 10 cities with high concentra- um, concentrations of monitored tip OSAI cases. So, unang-una, Tagig City. There are actually 66 number of cases filed in courts. Sunod doon ay Angeles City with 58 cases. Sunod ang Cebu, Iligan City, Lapu-Lapu City, Manila City, Caloocan City, Cagayan de Oro City, Butuan City, Pasig City at Quezon City. Yun po ay sa mga cases filed in court. Iba naman po ang mga convictions. Sa convictions naman, between 2003 and 2023, yung IACAT Secretariat was able to monitor 224 OSAI convictions. Um, 
and they were able to monitor 299 other TIP and OSAIC related convictions. Kasi po kapag nagpa-file po tayo ng cases against OSAIC, minsan hindi lang naman po OSAIC eh, di ba? So minsan kasama na rin po doon ay ang trafficking, kasama na rin po doon ang acts of lasciviousness, lasciviousness under the RPC, or sometimes sinasama na rin po doon ang RA9995 or Anti-Photo and Video Voyeurism Act of 2009. So, um, in, uh, ang tanong nyo po, no, kung mas tumaas po yung um, incidence of OSAIC, when you say incidence in terms of conviction, actually, yes, mas madumami ang conviction. So, when people kasi ask po, um, are there a lot of OSAIC cases? It can be a good thing and a bad thing. A good thing kasi that means mas madami nagre-report, di ba? But a bad thing kasi, wait lang, madami talaga OSAIC ang nangyayari. So that's how we can look at it po on both sides. It's high, yes, that's good because there's a lot of reporting. But then again, it's high because madaming incidents ang nangyari na ganito. Mm. Alam nyo, it has been expected talaga that there will be an increase in reported incidents of OSAEC and SISAEM as more people become aware of RA 11930. Agree po ako sa inyo, Attorney Grace. Kasi habang mas naiintindihan ng marami yung consequence ng uh, paglabag sa RA 11930 at ang protection for those reporting the incidents, mas dadami yung maglalakas loob to report it, lalo na sa neighborhood where this cybercrime happens. Tama ka dyan, Icon. So actually, in a study released by International Justice Mission in partnership with the Nottingham Rights Lab, it was discovered that in 2022 alone, more than half a million children, more than 500,000 Filipino children were victimized one way or another by local perpetrators and foreign customers uh, benefiting from online sexual abuse and exploitation of children, live stream shows, and uh, child sexual exploitation materials. So just imagine how overwhelming it is for caseworkers and stakeholders combating OSAEC. Alam nyo po, ang continuation ng ating episode na ito, hashtag RA11930, IRR implementation updates. Marami tayong topics sa dapat pang palakayin, pero let us first tackle itong law enforcement. Idikit alam natin na ang mga challenges that our law enforcement agencies encounter in pursuing online predators and cyber criminals. Though RA 11930 is already here, it's it was enacted uh, in 2022 and IRR was passed last year. Maraming issues that should now be addressed. We will know how the anti-OSAEC law will impact law enforcement. Dito lamang po yan sa Cyber Chat Season 2.